Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Droll on true to everyone, and I got to tell you, it's a great way to start. Afternoon, Admiral. And, good afternoon. Uh, I am Wrong jazzed. <laughs> yeah, be on this side today. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, Wait, you, you're you, not there. That's the wall. <laughs> right. Well, but you should you, be in the command chair over here, right? <laughs> well, you should be as well, Admiral, because both you and I are in the same spot. Uh, Greg, uh, thank you for joining me once again. I'm looking forward to this today, ladies and gentlemen. It's June 15, 2023, season two, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. And there was the bam! That was a special effect. So thank you, one <laughs> and all. And uh, we are going. And look at that already in the house. Thank you. Yes, hit it. Engage. Zoom. Vamanos. Let's do it. And uh, straight Let the show steady. Go now. <laughs> Actual, oh yes, yes, yes. What did he say? Yes. Uh, he, oh, darn it! I wrote it down. Uh, what, what was his line? Please, because uh, I know hers go. was Bama. I would like the ship to go now, just yes. as you said. Yes. <laughs> hey, Liz, how you doing? And Tiffany, how you doing? Thanks for joining us, ladies. And Hello. glad we already have a like. And uh, hopefully you guys have already seen the debut episode of Season 2 today for Strange New Worlds. So, we did if a not, lot There last will be week. spoilers, so be warned. Uh, that's right. Yes. Come on, folks. You better know. So, hey, Tiffany, once again, thank you. Everyone in the chat room, let us know who you are and where you hail from. That's Greg. I'm Roger. Uh, wow. We're going and blowing. We did uh, last week the review of season one. We didn't get a chance to talk about what we wanted to see moving forward. I don't know, Greg, if you still want to do it, knowing that season one has begun. But I know you and I did have a conversation prior to the episode about one major plot point. And maybe we can take a few minutes and get to that. And I'll remind you of it. Correct me if I'm wrong. But the uh, thing with number one. Oh, you were yeah. wondering, or and I'm par and correct me, obviously, because uh, it, it'll be revisionist history. Otherwise, um, I think your thing was I don't want to resolve it immediately. You, you're expecting it to go a little bit, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I'm torn. It's like you know, I mean, we can get to it later after we talk about tonight's, but. You know, next week they're going to be diving into the court martial with her, and so it's like part of me is like, okay, let's get the serialized thing out behind us, and then we'll, you know, able to move on. Now, the other side of it is, is you know, let it stew a little bit. You know, if they're going to do the serialized thing, throw in you know conversations with her like they did tonight, and. You know, do like that. So I was like, I'm a little bit torn, but I would love to see her back on the on the bridge in action. But oddly enough, she wasn't in the trailer as much. So no, she was not, and I think that was done deliberately, which is maybe a good choice uh, because one thing, Greg, over the last 10, 15 years, and so ruined in Terminator Salvation. The preview gives, yeah, you you know what I'm talking. Dude, they gave the whole movie away. Terminator Salvation in the preview. It's like, come on, this is Jimmy Neutron all over again. Hey, hey, uh, folks, don't argue with me. Check it out. Watch the preview for the Jimmy Neutron movie in 2001, and then you see the movie. And it's like, I saw it in the preview. The only thing missing was the chicken dance. Yeah, <laughs> but, pretty much. Look, it was entertaining for my kids. That's all I can say. And I was somewhat entertained. But I did see the entire preview. And, and that was in the early part of this century, well into this last decade, the preview. Dude, it's like, what's the point? Why even have a preview if they're going to give it all away? A preview used to be a tease. Yes. I don't know if you feel the same way, Greg, but I, I think previews give away way too much. Well, I mean, in the, for this season, they um, they showed like a really major moment of this tonight's episode in the season trailer, and it you know I'm like you know the minute they go into 
well, we're getting to the very end of the episode. But, you know, the minute they go into the airlock, it's like, oh, they're going to blast themselves out of the airlock without suits. Yep. You know, yes. because we'd see, you know, you know, and the, you know, it was the same thing with Spock's, you know, fun moment, you know, you know, they could have like just clipped it to like go now in the trailer, but yet you know, they had the, I want the ship to go now, you know, in the trailer, you know, they could, you know, but it, I think it also was a promise that there's still going to be light. There's still going to, you know, make an effort to balance fun with serious drama and even they're still doing an awesome job of that well i think we have one of uh, greg's first opinions of uh, into season one so we'll get into that strange new world season two episode one and we're going to be all over the place folks it's just i have the theme where i i tend to guide through the steps but no we're going to be all over the place so everyone in the chat room, let us know who you are, where you hail from. Let's hear your comments. Elizabeth, I'd love to hear. Tiffany as well. The Broken Circle, Episode 1, Season 2, written by Henry Alonzo Reyes and Akiva Goldsman and directed by Chris Fisher. Starts off, Starbase 1. What were some of your thoughts that you shared with me at the very beginning, Greg, about that? Oh, my God. This was, you know... Yeah, going back, okay, so I didn't see the motion picture in the theater. I saw it on HBO with snow because we had a broken filter from a lightning storm. You know, going back to seeing the Enterprise, every time they do the grand space shot, I get I get goosebumps. I love the ships. And we had lots of ships. We had little flyers. We had the, a, a nice shuttle center screen for a good 10 20 seconds until we got to see not just the enterprise but the enterprise getting worked on they had little welding spots going on and stuff and it was it, it you know it had that cinematic quality that roger moore introduced in uh, uh, not roger moore uh donald moore introduced i'm in, all right with that <laughs> <laughs> Um, introduced in Battlestar Galactica. You know, you had these, like, you know, we're going to do, like, this wing camera thing. They didn't do it exactly. It was still, you know, you know, the, this Star Trek feel. But, you know, you, they were following ships, and they followed another ship. And it was just, it was just absolutely gorgeous. I'm like, this is going to be a good one. Just for, uh, you know, and, you know, then they go to inside the station and you have this beautiful panoramic looking across one of the pressure domes and you know the art department is just outdoing themselves on this show yeah there's no doubt they're spending quite a bit of money look they were spending quite a bit of money in the tng run voyager and everything i remember i think it was near the second or third season back then paramount pictures was investing 1.5 million dollars an episode Folks, that was a lot of money. It wasn't a lot of money maybe for a science fiction program, but it was still a great deal of money. That was unheard of back then for just a regular program. I'm not going to get into the whole uh, Cosby show and Seinfeld and how much they cost and eventually Big Mac. That, that's not the point here. It's They were spending quite a bit of money then. Now they're spending movie money now per episode which is crazy hi tiffany i don't know if that was like uh a, a borg uh incursion and you were caught in a temporal wake and you just got my message <laughs> about where you are but thank you tiffany you are in mississippi but it's good uh elizabeth says when it got closer you could feel the immense size of the station between the multiple small runabouts to the enterprise okay exactly. i think that's what greg commented right now it was just absolutely, it was cinema for, you know, I only got to see it on the 40 inch screen and it was like, this is movie Oh, that's quality. mine too. It's a 40 inch. <laughs> <laughs> like, so folks, now you know, both Greg and I are working men. <laughs> so, that's funny. I think, I'm sorry. I revealed our size. Sorry, Greg. <laughs> Gets the job done, right? That's right. It works. So so we believe. 
<laughs> That's funny. I appreciate you being a team player on that, Greg. And the girls are like, don't brag. <laughs> don't brag. We'll I got see. a 60 I mean, inch at home. <laughs> I let my my wife has the 60 inch <laughs> at, at my actual house. I'm still damn. at my mom's. You know what? I think I'm consistently 40 across the board because we have I have the 40 here. I have the 40 in the living room, which is almost never used. Oh, there it is. There. Thank you, Elizabeth. You are a team player as well, young lady. I'm surprised Tiffany didn't jump in on that one. But if Tiffany is caught in the temporal wake of first contact, I guess it's going to take her a while to get it. That one back there, if I'm not mistaken, that is a 32-inch back there. So that's the second monitor that we have during the season. Uh, the kids will sit right there while I do business here. The kids will sit over there with the Roku. They can watch a lot of stuff. So every now well, and then, we've come a I get long to way. Stuff. It's yes. 1987. Oh, well, yes. I was newly married, and we bought our first TV together, which was a 19-inch color tube television, because Next Generation was going to be on. <laughs> yeah. Because we had to step up from the three-inch portable black and white that we were making do with for the year up until And that. And where'd you get it? Did you get it at Circuit City? Oh, where did we get that? Um, because I think mine was a 19-inch Circuit City. And believe it or not, I bought mine in 89. And that TV moved with us everywhere. I think it just died. I kid you not, Greg. That one TV just died. Oh, my goodness. Within the last four to five years. Yeah, I don't know what ever happened to it. But um, Those were good TVs, Best man. Buy was around back then. We got it at Best Buy. Okay. Ooh, I don't think we have if, that. If spot. not, it might have come from. <laughs> oh. That's awesome. And actually, you know what? I got the 60 inch <laughs> for the. <laughs> yes. She has got it a temporal wake. <laughs> so, yes, Elizabeth. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, um, last year was when I got the 60. For the premiere of Strange New Worlds. <laughs> you see, I guess I just haven't yet because, I, I, you know, I, I'm not, I, I, I don't want to put a 60 inch up there already, knowing that it's really not secured. I, I don't think I want to do that because I have the bookcase. Some people have seen it. And behind it, there's another workstation. Folks, this is a, a working office here. That's where my assistant sits over there. You can barely see her desk. There's a station behind me right here. So there's the desk. There's another station there. And there's another to meet with on the other side. So there's two stations, two backups. And uh, so I, a 60-inch TV would be rather, yeah. yeah. It, it Just here, it would be on. And I didn't do it. And uh, yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> wow. Now, hey, we're reliving first. Well, we're not reliving first contact. Tiffany is. I just want to see if she can see whether the Borg have been assimilated, have they, if they've already assimilated Earth or not. But anyway, bragging about size, Admiral, I respect you, buddy. You're 60. Good for you. <laughs> I'm stuck on 40. My wife, my wife keeps it though. <laughs> Oh, well, she's going to watch this and smack me when I get home. Yeah, um, <laughs> hey, sorry. <laughs> so, hey, if it leads to something, good for you. So it's all good. But I'll, I'll, I'll keep it aside, folks. Uh, thank you for being on with us again. Don't forget to visit ndbmedia.net where you can check and see as to what's going on. We actually have quite a few guests. Michael Day has done a phenomenal job in scheduling all these guests. We have quite a bit of stuff happening Bobby Nash will be joining us next Monday for Monday Night in America. And it looks like uh, we do have another art guest uh, that will be joining us. <laughs> Don't all wives keep your toy. I wouldn't know anymore, Liz. I wouldn't know. So I can't say. Even though I... Yeah, okay, now I'm getting emotional. Even though I celebrated my 30th anniversary was on the 12th. Last week, yeah. It, it effectively ended 
uh, in 2019, October, somewhere around October 6th. I even put it on Facebook. It, it was on Facebook when it happened, when she decided to get out. And I know we're talking Star Trek, right? I'm sorry. And this and, is why the show goes three hours. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing, I was watching a playoff game. And when it happened, it went down. I went straight to Facebook and I put a post saying, I'm logging this moment for posterity. And I know it's in early October. So I think it was about the sixth. It was a playoff game. I could, if the Yankees were playing, I'm sure I could narrow down the day. But when it comes back in October, I'll, that's it. That's the day. Anyway, it is what it is. So, but we are all over the place. You know, that scene that both of you have been talking about, I kind of got a little discombobulated. There was a lot of movement and I lost track of stuff. So I, I think I wasn't as impressed, uh, you know, with that. So. I don't know, uh, but I, I did appreciate the shot going right to the Enterprise. So, hey, uh, it, it it was good stuff. Uh, they right away, I believe, get into the monologue of they're doing system checks. And Pike says, something's up. I'm getting a vibe from Starfleet Command. The brass, I think he says the brass, but they're not revealing. He says, something is in the air. And then he goes straight into the conversation with number one. Okay. And uh, she reveals something to the effect of, look, don't waste your time. Don't do whatever she says. Don't start a fight. You can't win. You yourself told me that, Pike. And she said that she believes they're going to offer her a plea deal. So I don't know what that would be. What? Uh, say you're guilty and you're cashiered out automatically? I mean, isn't that what's going to happen anyway? What the hell is the plea deal? Maybe not imprisonment or... Who knows? We'll see. Um, it's going to be... Uh, they didn't really get into it much. Um, right. You know, just that there's this mysterious, awesome lawyer who we're going to meet in next week's episode. Is that who he was talking about going to see on a three-day trip? Yes. Okay. That is so funny if it would be... What was his name? Was it Cogswell? Or Cogsley? I think he's a she. Oh, uh, they it's a she. Yes. They, okay, don't have because... cast, they don't have cast any additional cast up for next week yet. They don't even have the name of the episode because I was going to look, try to. I didn't quite catch the name in Ready Room. I did not see Ready Room this time. I was up. Uh, I wasn't feeling very well for some reason. And I was up at 12 12. All of us says, hey, it's midnight already. Screw it. Watch it. I'm glad I did because I, I told you I ran out of time today. Oh, it's actually on at midnight. I, I, um, it's at midnight. It, it I drops. quickly got online for work this morning around 8.30 yeah. and quickly tried to get through as much email as I could. And then I had a lull where there was a canceled meeting and I watched it at 10 a.m. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That was 7 o'clock. What was I doing? I think I was starting to wake up again because we had an appointment for my oldest today at around 10.15. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Actually, I did have to pause it a couple times. So I think between 10 and noon was my first watch, and then I watched it again after dinner. I saw it straight through. And, you know, Greg, I will say this about the episode. I've had trouble watching some of them, and this is just in general, and I think it's just me. But I was wide awake, saw it through. There were some imagery that I liked. But I've got to tell you, jumping ahead, and we're going to be talking all of – Greg, we're not going to follow scene by scene, beat by beat. Okay, so it's good. Jump to wherever you want. Stealing the Enterprise, not only is it a James Horner track, I think it's number six, seven, or eight on the Star Trek three search for spots in the Enterprise. Stealing the Enterprise is sacrosanct for me. Okay, the whole idea, I told you, I've equated it to a scene in Harry Potter. 
I'm not sure if you know this, Greg, but in the Order of the Phoenix, when things are starting to come to a head and they're on the bridge and Harry's like, wow, guys, I love you. I, I You know, this is awesome, but I have to go to the Ministry of Magic now. And then Harry says, you know, dude, you're thick at times. This has always been bigger than you. We're with you no matter what. And that realization was a throwback to when they're on the bridge of the Enterprise, where Kirk says, I love you all, my friends. I can't ask you to go any further. Dr. McCoy and I have to do this. The rest of you do not. Admiral, we're losing precious time. What course, please, Admiral? Scotty, I'd be grateful, Admiral, if you'd give the word. I mean, I know that word for word, folks. I mean, it is sacrosanct for me. Them stealing the Enterprise on the barest of hopes that they might be able to recover Spock. So when they see, they say, well, we're going to steal the Enterprise. Like, oh, okay, well, where are we going? <laughs> so did it bug you in any way? Did you make that connection? I did. I was not happy with it. Uh, I saw it entering the danger of becoming a trope um, where, um, okay, we're going to steal the spaceship. Um, granted, we did it in a fan film, uh, <laughs> but it, <laughs> yeah, um, but the um, we were also kind of rescuing the spaceship anyway. That different story, um, we'll get but to that one. It started with you know, my first thought was okay, so this is the Spock in Menagerie that stole the enterprise he's in there switching tapes and you know giving orders and being sneaky and you know this is you know okay so now we kind of are getting a little bit of retcon on mr logical not being so logical i mean they already set up that this is going to be an emotional season for spock and they set it up at the end of season one, I think, in the Gorn episode, which was yeah. episode nine, where and I he also, just, yeah. And I also kind of wonder, Ethan Peck's thick, curly hair is starting to come out a little bit. They're not making his hair so straight and smooth. And I'm wondering if there's any tie to between his being more emotional and human and them not trying to work so hard to give him the Vulcan haircut. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. Or they ran out of wigs. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that's an interesting little... I didn't notice that. But, you know, knowing that there's not much up there, it's like, all right, all right, he has hair. F him. Let's move on. <laughs> so, Mine's I did notice... straight. I got a little left. It's uh, cut short because it's a pain in the butt and still oily as heck at 55. Cut short. You're young man. You got me by one year. Yeah. yeah, yeah, April's me. So, uh, all right, so birthday, we're figure. what, 11 months apart? Oh, wow. Michael Day, budget cuts. Michael, why haven't you joined us? <laughs> Hi, Michael. Dude, you're a Strange New Worlds fan, dude. I'm, I, what do you, I, I get the impression that the other get the other hosts are like. I put it in our chat room. I put it there in, in our forum. Here it is, folks. Come on in. And, uh, I, well, maybe they don't want to do it. I don't know. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, I'm, hey, dude, I'm glad you got here. So good for you. That's the Spaniard in me. I have none. So, it certainly isn't the, uh, the, the local kids from down south because they had a lot of hair. Yeah. <laughs> says 10 p.m. in calendar. Oh, yeah, Michael, I told everyone I was changing it to 6 p.m. And then I set it up on YouTube, and I, I, I only did it on the forum and said 6 p.m. The cover title sheet says that. So, all right, Michael, fair enough. Well, get your ass in here. Come on. I know you've seen the episode. So, okay. We did see some of that uh, set up where Spock... I guess by breaking that barrier, he hasn't been able to bring it back up. So right. he is emotional right now. 
and Very. it it does affect him in episode one definitely. Which is it, it, it's it's not bad to see. I mean, it's like we know Spock has this side, so we've all, only ever gotten to see him ma- working to manage it a few times as a character. So. Um, you know, even though I'm all about the sci-fi and the tech, you know, as far as the character aspects go, you know, they, they started out with him basically going to the doctor because he's kind of stressed and anxious about being in command, even though they're in space dock, you know, and so to see him, to see his perspective on the human condition, you know, we get the data, you know, like, Data wanting to be human, we've always had Spock, you know, trying, you know, I'm, you know, unemotional and commenting on, you know, McCoy's over-emotional. And, Mm -hmm. you know, now we've got the Spock experiencing, you know, humanity. You know, um, feelings, you know, fighting with them, trying to understand them. You know, because I mean, you know, he's he's a lieutenant here, um, and you know, even though we've seen Ortega having the con, we've never really seen Spock have the con before. And not only that, he is like acting captain for you know. So, and of course, the first thing he does is steal the Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he he didn't wait that long, right? Tiffany says Michael just left. Maybe he's going to be joining us right now. Oh, did I ever uh, notice how he reacted with Nurse Chapel? Oh, yes. Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, early on, right? He's being examined by Dr. Mbenga, and he says, it looks to me like uh, you're experiencing stress. That's your uh, human side, uh, trying to get used to the situation. And what does he recommend? He recommends he plays the Lyra. Funny that it was Mbenga that brings out the Vulcan Lyra. That's what it is, right? It's the Lyra. Yep. Uh, Lyra or Liar. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Either. Uh, I, I, I don't remember, actually. And nor do I. I had thought it was Liar, but you might be right. Uh, it's okay. We're, hey, we're fans, same side. It's only the Klingon that we will argue over, but that's neither here nor there. And we'll get to Klingon. that. <laughs> well, if you want to get really bad, it's uh, Tilingan. Klingon in Klingon is Tilingan. So I always say Tilingan G. You're like, huh? <laughs> I'm Klingon. Or Klingon I am, but that's neither here nor there. It's okay. But you uh, need I actually accent. studied. Well, I'm supposed to spit all over everyone as well. Yes! I, like I took notes. German. I can do that. <laughs> I like it. Our guest that we had from the Ark uh, spoke uh, German, and uh, which was oh no 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 not not our Ark guest. It was actually uh, our other regular guest uh, spoke German, which was really interesting, and just came out of nowhere. But anyway, again, I apologize all over the place. Um, he starts to play. And we can see on the display, the heads up, his heart rate's going down. That was awesome. Nurse see, Chapel walks in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's science. <laughs> Nurse Chapel walks in. Boom! It shoots up. And he stops playing. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Uh, we don't know anything other than what we've seen. And in the TOS, she has a crush on him. That's it. That's all we know. And in the episode, A Mock Time, that's where she lets it be known a little bit more that she has a crush. But that was it. There was nothing prior. There was nothing nothing even after. So I I don't know if it's a retcon, but this is is pretty deep, dude. There's... Yeah. Uh, Yeah. You know, obviously, you know... I mean, the two of them have affection for each other, um, but you know that's that's okay. What concerns me is the segment in the season trailer with them getting all hot and bothered with each other. 
Uh, could that be a dream? I'm hoping. Because I, I really... I mean, I love this Nurse Chapel, but it's not Nurse Chapel we know from 1960s. Um, but one thing I picked up on, if we're talking about Chapel, she came came in to tell, um, you know, the episode is called Broken Circle, and everybody's off in different directions. And she came in to tell Mbanga that she's going to an archaeology seminar thing on Vulcan or so I'm still I mentioned this last week I think we're going to get to meet Dr. Corby sometime I think we are uh, and I think that's going to probably cool her heels with Spock and you know we still have to bring as an active character she's still listed in the cast for this season um so Oh, yeah, that triangle is far from over. You know, even though they've gone off script, I would say, off canon, with her being in the picture. Yeah, but... because didn't they say that they hadn't seen each other since they went the joining, which they were very young, if we understand the Vulcan... Uh, culture weren't they like joined at seven or twelve? Yeah, something? they were very young and they had not seen each other since. So, uh, yeah, that, that is a violation. And I want to thank James Haney from Starship Excelsior. You folks should check out the audio series, absolutely awesome, wonderful Star Trek. He's amazing, amazing stuff. And Greg, if you want to give a shout out to anyone, buddy, don't 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 even sweat it. This is Star Trek; it's our love. But folks, if you want audio, you want damn good stories. It's Starship Excelsior. They're an audio program. They're they've been doing this stuff for years, and uh, yeah, he's good stuff. So um, why the hell did I mention it? So <laughs> I'm getting old. Seven, Elizabeth says. Seven. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Liz. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, you're a hardcore. I think Tiffany posted somewhere on Facebook today where I guess she realized that this episode is going to be on. She goes, ah, blah, blah, blankety blank. Now I have to watch another program. Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> so... Even if you've never watched Star Trek, yes. You know what? Strange New Worlds is not bad. The drama is really good. It's a really good balance. They're getting back to where Next Generation was. It's a really good balance of drama, sci-fi, adventure, you know, character development, character stories, character-driven stories. Oh, she can blame me. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, the reason why I mentioned James Haney is because years ago, about the time that the J.J. Abrams movies debuted, he referred to me as a canonista. And I loved it. I was like, ooh, I like it. And famously, I think it was in 2009 when he gave me that moniker or title, and I've kept it ever since. I am a canonista. I've always been. I am a history major. Duh! <laughs> Come on. Yeah. See, I don't mind retconning. I just don't like going inconsistent. In ir irreconcilable differences. <laughs> um, yeah, second I Highlander movie. dealing with that very soon. <laughs> <laughs> Funny you would say that, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Yes, when there's a problem, it's just yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, which one are you laughing at, Tiffany? Because you're 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 caught in a temporal wake. It seems like. <laughs> so, I wonder which one. Uh, Michael, where the hell are you? I hope he didn't send me a message. Oh no, nothing yet. So we'll see. <laughs> Lurker. 
in chat rooms and on, on these types of things, these are, they're lurkers. <laughs> I have a favorite barkeep, and I called her. I call her my barkeep. Uh, she's over at uh, at an Applebee's right here in Montclair, and I asked her straight out. I said, "Hey, so when I show up and they let you know that I'm here, do they? How do they say? It? Do they say your stalker's here?" And they say, "Oh no, no, they say Roger's here." I'm like, "Oh, sh they know me by name." <laughs> Something like that's even worse. <laughs> the guys oh, at the God. deli at the local grocery store near my mom know me by name now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah. They they all know. I, and they're, I'm loyal to her. So I usually go, when I have a chance, I'll go there on a Tuesday afternoon and go there for happy hour. It used to work because I would leave work early pick up my assistant, then we go spend two, three hours at Applebee's, and then we come back to the office and work here until eight or nine in the evening. So I had something I look forward to. They haven't done that in, gosh, since March, well, at least my assistant and I. But uh, I, I went there this past Tuesday, and uh, it's fun. So stalker I am. Not if they know me Same by idea. name, woman. I think most people know who their stalkers are. That's how they get the restraining orders. Well, <laughs> well, thank God it's only... Well, we're friends on Facebook, so I don't know what the hell that means. So right now, these girls are going to be like, oh, they're going to be searching <laughs> my Facebook page. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it, it, it's not that big of a deal. You'll probably find her. She's really cool. She's really neat. But uh, I'm not going to put her name on. Uh, on Tiffany's program, safe yeah. in Mississippi, though, down there. So. I don't know. Start that, away. You know, the, <laughs> you know uh <-huh. laughs> yeah, there's called airplanes now, pal. But that's okay. Uh, actually, Tiffany kidded around the other day. She goes, hey, you don't have your uh, your GPS thing activated. And I deliberately did not answer you, Tiffany. I'm like, oh, no, I don't have it activated for anyone. <laughs> So she says, I keep sharing my locations. Well, I mean, I did. I actually haven't because I haven't been going anywhere lately. I mean, I do. I like to share where I go. So, uh, yeah. I, Applebee's, Mount Claire. Duh. It's, it's not that hard. <laughs> I generally don't for safety reasons. Not stupid. Yeah, Greg, I'm stupid. <laughs> By the way. That's stupid, but that's okay. So, yeah. Um, see, I was not even in uniform. I like that shirt, by the way, that you're wearing. Yeah, it, I just because I remember last week I mentioned I didn't have a lot of shirts, so I just got this one. This is a little big and a little bit too far to the armpit. So this is I'm calling this my animated series engineering team. Oh, nice one! I like it. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, wait a minute, that's your. Oh, that's engineering. Yep. Oh, that's Services. right. That's operations. Yes, that's correct. I'm sorry. So this uh, is a you, 3D printed badge. Oh, nice. So you can see the size difference. Once again, I credit you on your size, young man. So good job. <laughs> the delta is too big. <laughs> All right, here we oh, go. Well. It was a twenty dollar t shirt. What, what are you gonna do? Uh, it, it's it's nice. I really don't have too many uh, Star Trek t shirts. I only have, I think I only have one or two. Quite frankly, I just by the luck of the draw, I have the clothing Star Trek and lots of Star Wars t shirts. Unfortunately, I was telling Greg before we went live. I said I love how he's wearing the red t shirt, and I'm wearing the Kirk undergarment from the movies. Uh, where they had the black tunic, which is really cool. So, girls, I'm having a moment of weakness. Do I wear the high collar uniform, or can I get away with a jacket today? So let me no, know. go casual. I like the play jacket. And speaking of casual, oh, I know why. Let's see. And Michael. Hi, Michael. Hey. Where's the uniform, pal? It's in the closet over there. Oh, I'm frozen. 
No. Oh, here we go. We just went dark. Thank you. you yes. Thank you, Elizabeth. All right. Well, we've talked about a few things of the episode. Michael, have you had a chance to see Strange New Worlds now? Episode one? I uh, yeah, I've seen it, but I'm wondering if my internet connection is being a pain. So uh, I don't know. And knowing that you have knowing that the uh, the internet people gave you brand new internet connections. I mean, come on, what the hell's up with your engineer? Uh, well, I had to help him, so that's probably why. Ha ha ha. That's okay. always the worst case when you get somebody in you gotta you're wondering how they got the job. Uh yeah, I had to actually help him install it. It was really bad. That is bad. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the uh when they came in to do mine, he's like, Oh, you've got a patch block in here and <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I'm like, so, yep, here's the wire for you. Hook it up to that. <laughs> that's pretty much yeah that's what i had to deal with hey michael yeah. just out of curiosity sorry for switching gears but is that mount saint helens behind you i have no idea i don't think it is because of that mound that is to your right shoulder there's a smaller mount. i don't think that's mount saint helens no, I, but... I just found this image and i said oh i'm going to use that instead it's more fun so. let me tell you folks that reminds me of being in alaska that imagery yeah, it does yeah. look like a goat. Oh, my God. It was there. beautiful in April. I, I wish I could have gone again this year, but physically I wasn't able to. So, uh, Folks, it looks like, and now that we're on the topic real quick, I'm going to bore the crap out of everyone. Um, I will be taking time off in July. I don't know the actual date. It looks like the only episodes I will be doing on a regular basis will be Thursday night. Oh, it could be Mount Rainier. It uh, might be. Yeah. It, it, uh, it 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 could be. There's so many of those mountains up there in the Cascadia, but uh, no matter what happens, depending on when I go under the knife, I don't have the actual date. I have my blood work done tomorrow. I'm probably going to have two procedures done in the month of July. That's going to be taking a lot of time off. I don't know if Sports Talk with the guys will be on. I have no idea. There will be no Monday Night America. There won't be anything. But Strange New Worlds will There will be on the 3rd of July, though. If, if uh, yes, because it'll be after July 5th. So oh, okay. as I get closer to July, uh, the dates will be in. But I don't know. Everything's up in the air. But come hell or high water, Strange New Worlds will be on. So no matter what. So Just Greg. That's it. Uh, which he can handle it all on his own. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So here, let me be down here. There you go. Greg's <laughs> shot looks better. Michael's shot looks better. Mine is... I'm in my garage. So, Mr. Michael. Button, Roger. Um, okay. If it'll make you feel better, I can turn the background off. Not at all. I'm bragging that it's nice. It looks good, Greg. I really do like it. Uh, I'm in my mom's spare bedroom. Put it back on. <laughs> <laughs> it looks oh, nice. Oh, the closet, the closet, the linen closet's open. <laughs> That's a nice image. You, you should, yeah, you should. Um, folks, I'm directing this to my co-host. When you said push the button, I'm also directing it to my to our ooh, the Freudian slip to our guests in the chat room. Um, do you dream in color or not? Quick story. I always wondered whether I dreamt in color or not. And then I had the dream where whatever it was, I got the order. Push the red button. And they said, push the red button. And I looked over and in the dream, I'm like, oh, now I know. And immediately and I, woke up. And I immediately woke up and I said, oh, shit. Was it in color or black and white? Oh, the man. minute the minute you have a conscious thought in a dream, yes, it's gone. It's gone. But I did. I looked over, and for the moment, I had it where I was like, now I know. And I woke up. And yep. so I gave up. I don't know if I dream in color or not. Greg, do you dream in color? I think I do. Michael, do yes. you dream in color? Yes, I do. Ooh. Ladies, 
Uh, Tiffany, we were talking about a button woman, but thank you for that. And uh, not necessarily. <laughs> I'm old. Not necessarily. But anyway. Uh, oh, okay. Liz says, I think color because I saw blood. Occupational hazard. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Oh, uh, internal announcement. Liz, it looks like that program is going to be moving forward. Probably happening sometime in July or August because there's a lot of travel by the gentleman who's going to be running that program. So that's all I can tell. This is, we're going to have a new program. It's going to be directed at veterans. So we look forward to that. Oh, wow. It's it's a veteran himself. And uh, we'll, we're really excited about that one moving forward, but we'll see. Okay. Awesome. Uh, come on, Tiffany. Color or not? It's got to know. Uh-oh. What happened, Michael? Did you hear something? Did the Enterprise fly by? Did the no. president fly over your place right now? No. He's coming he, here. Um, oh, he when, when's he coming out? Tomorrow. He's supposed to be in Connecticut tomorrow. Oh, okay. Not too bad. So then they fly the other way, so. Yeah. He's coming, we'll he's coming up space. to visit Governor Lamont, probably. Oh, nice. Michael. What are some of your thoughts? We've been going over some points. We're not going beat by beat, uh, but uh, what were some of your thoughts of tonight's episode? Oh, I enjoyed it. Um, oh, you did I as was, well. Okay, I, cool. I did. I enjoyed it. I you know, wasn't totally with it at the time, but uh, I'm still recovering from yesterday. So um, I said, ah, I'll watch it, but I, I need to watch it again. So, But you did enjoy it? I did enjoy it, yeah. Did you get Star Trek three vibes out of it? So I was telling Greg, I was a little unhappy when the whole stealing the Enterprise, I immediately flipped out. I'm like, oh, come on, come on. That's a sacrosanct moment for me in Star Trek lore when they steal the Enterprise to go save Spock's life. I know it's not the exact same thing, but stealing the Enterprise, there's a, it's, I think, track eight <laughs> in uh, the search for Spock. Or it's probably track six for all I know. But. Well, five. I mean, who knows? But and yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I, I I was thinking of that. I I was thinking of other things too. I mean, I was really thinking of Menagerie. Um, oh, Greg commented about that as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's honestly what I thought of first was Menagerie, or yeah. So, did you hear Greg's comments? Uh uh Okay, Greg, did you want to go over it again? I, I guess. Well, I, you don't need you don't need to. I mean, I I, I just you know. I don't want to repeat stuff, you know, with people. I'm trying to get rid of an ad. Hang on. Okay. Hang on. Ads are fun. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I was looking for something on the side, and I got an annoying ad with, in my ear. So, uh, yeah, no, this is a uh, quick recap. This is the Spock that was switching the the tapes and playing and Captain Menagerie. Kirk's voice to steal the Enterprise. Yeah, so this is where we begin to see that hint of unemotional behavior in Spock as we know he's a little unhinged right now for Vulcan. And Michael, we noticed that because it went back to episode nine when Spock broke that barrier so he could fight the Gorns. Right. And he hasn't been able right. to reestablish it. So it's interesting how they work that in. I, gotta, I, I will give them credit on that. They're looking to justify why he is the way he is. So I, I will give him that. And it, it is a shade of the menagerie, which is good. I didn't catch that. Uh, I actually picked up on a line in the first season. I forget what episode it was. Uh, my s second watch through. Mm -hmm. And he said something about Balkans cannot lie, at least not in the way that humans do. And I'm like, oh, that's a really clever way to look at the the inconsistencies that have preceded have preceded the um, strange new worlds. Because even classic Trek was inconsistent with itself at times. Um, the movies certainly they poked fun at you know some of some of the non-Vulcan behavior. Oh, excuse me. 
Sorry. Um, Star Trek II. Savvy. Yeah. Tells him, you lied. I exaggerated. You know, <laughs> Star Trek V. You lie. I'm a Vulcan. I'm incapable of lying. <laughs> that was in the fifth movie. Uh, so there's, yeah, that there's that that we know in the movies. I don't think he lies in any other point. Uh, he withholds information in Star Trek VI, which is actually handled in Unification. I think they teased it in the um, Bad Robot movies, too. It, it, and I think his response was, I implied. <laughs> About, you know, the... the oh, yeah. He, if he and uh, his younger self met each other, that bad things would happen. Yes, that's right. I, I, I'm more implied. Yeah, but he hasn't bold-faced lied. And it's brought up by the engineer who is very famous to all of us. The brand you have a smile to your face, Greg. You want to talk about that real quick? And I want to give a quick oh. shout out in the meantime. Jay, so thank you for the love. Have, Elizabeth, thank you for the love. Go ahead. Sorry. They have been teasing, they have been te teased this back in the winter that Carol Kane was going to be joining as the engineer. We have Commander Pelia, played by 70 year old Carol Kane. She's 71 now, but she was 70 when they filmed. And this is this is when diversity works. We finally have somebody who's everybody else you know is looking at retirement when they're 70 and this comedian is coming on and kicking it as a comedian she's light she's bubbly she's fun and she's chaos in a bottle um she's an alien we find out she's a lanthanite did i say that right i believe so yeah lanthanite and um, she's been living on Earth for thousands of years, and apparently there's other Lanthanites. Hmm. And um, so, you know, she, 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 she she's just, it, oh, it's just great. I mean, the minute they revealed her in the episode, it was like they directed it just for her because they're calling over the the fake warp core breach and she's just in the corner like mm -hmm. you know and you know makes her way up to the bridge and the scene that follows is just it, it's again how strange new worlds is making not necessarily comedy but making enjoyable smileable moments within the drama yeah you know folks some of the older Star Trek fans, and I can see it now, Greg, Michael, I can imagine that some of the older fans are whining and groaning over what this scene did. Because if you look at it in its barest form, she smells that something is up. And she says it. I haven't gone out in a hundred years. And you guys, you know, Come on, it's a coolant leak. Where's the temperature gradient? Where's this? Where's that? None of you did, none of that did. Are you accusing us of something? It's like, no, like, come on. We've been doing this for three days <laughs> and uh, nothing happened. So, what is the deal? And then she says something to the effect of, okay, hold on. Uh, when she shows up, she oh, temps commonly mistaken. Someone accidentally simulated a coolant leak, she says. And then she asks him straight out, do you have a good reason? And then he says, well, because Vulcans don't do anything without having a good reason. Do yeah. you have a good reason for doing this? And he says, I have a hunch. <laughs> a Vulcan with a hunch? <laughs> that was really good. Uh, that whole scene... I actually did enjoy it. This was like the adult in the room that, for lack of a better word, hadn't gotten out in a long time, and she wants to play, right? That's the vibe that I got. Michael, did you see something wrong in that scene, whatever? I, I was actually okay with it. Had nothing to do with Carol Kane. 
it was the entire scene, the way it was written, the way it was done. I thought it was good, Michael. Well, I, I just think it was interesting, you know, when she said how old she was, and it's like, she's seen all this before. She was there when they <laughs> developed everything. I'm sure she knew everything inside out. And she was just like, these youngins, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, she knew exactly what was going on, and she knew Spock's mother, yes. Yeah. And uh, she even got a little snotty with Spock and said, um, I teach a course on coolant leaks or something to that yeah, effect. Yeah. And he was, oh, you do? <laughs> yeah, I do. So, yeah, that was um, pretty it, good. It, it was, Greg. I'm not sure. Because he's always have... been the know-it-all. In every episode, he's the know-it-all. And here's somebody that knew something he didn't. <laughs> I love that. And, and it was good. And it was interesting where she says, well, are you going to excise the coolant, you know, from the warp nacelles? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you're going to make this real, right? Mm -hmm. And it was funny. I thought Admiral April was going to say, hey, Spock, cut that, you know, cut it out. I know what you're doing. This thing was like, uh, back off. Can't you see that you're, you're, you're leaking? And it was interesting how they told me. Back off. I thought that was funny. Whereas in Star Trek 3, Admiral Morrow was on the phone within a minute. Chekhov says, uh, Commander Starfleet on the emergency channel, he orders you to surrender this vessel. He knew exactly what was going on. On this one, Robert April was like, uh, you want to back off? <laughs> so I, I thought it was, he didn't expect Spock to do any of that stuff. He'd given his order. And he did not expect them to steal the Enterprise. So it was a nice ploy. It was well done. Like I said, the phrase stealing the Enterprise irked me. But the way they pulled it off, I'm all right with it. I was. Yeah. yeah they I didn't think... steal the Enterprise to go save someone. Well, they did go save someone's funny, you know. Laon, right? That's who it was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and also the big premise was is you know we haven't talked about the Klingons much yet, but the big premise was is something's going down with the Klingons, and we get the this week's strange new world is Kajitar Four. Oh yeah, Kajitar. Is that what it is? Okay, Kajitar. Yeah. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> uh, and, and, and that's close. It sounds like it. So Kajitar, folks, as we understand, was right in the middle of the fight. And now that they've signed a non agreement well, it's like a, a truce. There's a truce right now. And apparently this is a dilithium-rich world. I mean, like Maxo, Zoom, whatever. And there is a an agreement. For right now, each empire, oh, I'm sorry, each stellar organization gets it for 30 days. So things are very, you know, Cold War-ish that we got our 30 days, you shouldn't be here. When you're on your 30 days, we're not there. So having a Federation ship show up during the 30 days, yeah, that could very well be considered an act of war. Yeah, did you um, talk about when this was filmed yet? That this was filmed months before season one ever aired yes. on Paramount Plus? Did we haven't talk talked about it, but yeah, yeah, I saw that. I mean, when you think about that, that they started filming season two before they'd even started showing season one, uh, that showed someone had great confidence in Strange New Worlds before it even started to air. And so Carol Kane, <laughs> before even season one aired, she was already filming, obviously, some of her stuff in season two. I just think that's interesting. So they kept that quiet that she was in season two for a while. Long while, because I didn't, I don't remember seeing it until like around Christmas time. Right. Is Hollywood still can keep secrets, apparently, from time to time. Mm -hmm. I yep. guess if they had a closed set, I think they must the have. The people on the bridge were the, there was what, one, two, 
three, four people on the bridge. If word gets out, you pretty much can narrow it down. Of who it was, yeah. Well, also, you got the whole crew and everything. The crew, too. but they could have had a limited crew, and that was still during COVID major times. So, yeah, with filming restrictions. So, they probably had a very limited crew anyway. But I just think it's interesting. Um, I, I did hear an interview with Ethan Peck, and he was, and he was saying that they, you know, they didn't even know what to do a lot of times because usually he said other productions he's been on, the network people are there, mm -hmm. the um, the producers are there. They says none of them were there, and they get they heard nothing when they started season two to <laughs> even know if they were doing things right. So they just decided to do it the way they'd done it on season one because they were having, you know, no of these extra guidance that they've normally had with other productions. So I just thought that was interesting. And I'm sure it had everything to do with the COVID restrictions at the time. So I think it does. But you know, folks, with today's technology, if anyone spent a little bit of time watching the, um, the uh, Lord of the Rings, the appendices, you know, the DVDs and all that stuff, they were talking about how Peter Jackson was here and 400 miles away, he was watching the live tape, yeah, wherever they were. Yeah. So yeah. I wonder if Paramount has that set up right now where the executives can watch it live anyway. They may, and they may have done that for, for COVID, and they'll probably keep it now. So. Yeah. But to answer both of you, I did not equate that. And do you notice, Greg? I guess I've seen the preview for Stranger World season two, but no, I I guess I saw it. I lucked out. I saw it, and that's it. It must have debuted during tax season. So if it was during tax season, I saw it, and then all right, back to all forty returns. I got to do right now. The the teaser was definitely out back in April. I think this one's only been out. But maybe about a month, Michael? I may not have oh, seen yeah. that one, or I just saw it quickly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I, you know what? I may be fortunate in that way that I have not seen. I saw the original teaser once whenever it debuted, whether it's March or April. Excuse me. <coughs> I, folks, Speaking believe this or not, I was the luckiest man in the world back in May of 1999. I did not see the teaser to The Phantom Menace. So when I walked into the theater to watch it that debut day, I was genuinely going in wise wide open. And you know, I laugh all you want. I enjoyed the movie. I genuinely did. I enjoyed The Phantom Menace. It had, but, it had a lot of high points. Let me tell you. In the very beginning, where they're chewing through that door with their lightsaber, I'm like, you can't stop these guys! They're awesome! <laughs> anyway, yes, but I was lucky, and I think I am fortunate in this too, Greg and Michael, in that I did not see the teaser. So well, I did. I'm going blind on this, and I kind of, I don't think I'm going to take a look at the teaser now, because you already referenced the teaser twice. And did you notice I had a blank look in my face? I'm like, oh, uh, oh, oh, uh, I didn't, I don't think I saw that. Well, I'll try, okay, so I'll try not to spoil any of the No, not at all. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. It, it's cool. Mention it. It's just, I, so like, I won't tell you about the teaser for episode two then, right? Is it out already? Watch Ready Room. There's actually a good short segment from Ready Room that's probably going to be the pre credit segment. I will go ahead and watch that because that's fair. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll have to take a look. I just didn't see Ready Room. I, I noticed it was on right after the episode, but it was already 1.15 in the morning. I'm like, man. I put it on. I was listening, but I, I didn't actually like, sit and watch it until I realized what they were doing, like you know, there's when they're showing scenes and stuff. So, Um. Yes. I, I'm going to have to watch it. it. Oh, but we absolutely love the ready room. I just didn't want to see that episode at that 
point in time. So I will be watching it. Uh, yes, yes, Elizabeth, I love that. Speaking of bridge crew, I absolutely loved Ohoro's protection of her station when they wanted to upgrade it. Oh, my God. I really, when Ohoro was doing that, I was like, that could have been me <laughs> at work where I'm like, back off. I've got stuff to do. And, uh, hey, you, who do you work for? No matter what, I'm working. So uh, I thought that was kind of cool. Is it interesting how she's taken to her role? I guess when we lost Himmler, it crystallized for her, her commitment. Did you guys, they didn't really touch on it that much. They haven't talked about it yet. No, only, um, it may have only been in Ready Room or in one of the, the promo spots, but no, they really didn't. May, they really haven't talked about the, yes it was in ready room because they talked about i think the, there's probably going to be something like crystallizing between her and and carol kane's character carol kane's character pelia okay because yeah. laon um, noticed when ohuro showed up and it was that she was ensign she wasn't a cadet anymore so laon did appreciate that she's like oh okay so, so she's com definitely we knew she was going to commit to Starfleet, but you know, it, you know, that was awesome. And also, it was like months later. I, they did a they did mention that that the time difference between the end of first season and the beginning of the second season was months. Yeah. So you know, she graduated. I I was actually disappointed she didn't graduate as Lieutenant J G. She's supposed to be brilliant. Mm, that's right. Yeah. Sometimes they get it right, sometimes they don't about the four-year academy in Star Trek, but hey, it's all good. Uh, but she is an ensign right now. We'll see. We'll see what happens when she moves up. But uh, I do appreciate that, Elizabeth. That was a great comment. Um, it was interesting. I appreciate the play with the Klingons, having them come in, and they're trying to get the tech. It's obvious. They're trying to get a tech because they're trying to fake out. They they obviously do want to start a war because it's in their best interest. So that was interesting. I did like that. Um, the Klingons were getting screwed on the price. They were being taken by Laon. But what did the Klingons say? He says, I'll pay you double. But I still want more. Lots more. So he gave in to her. Now... What did you guys think about the blood wine drinking competition? I thought it was good, but okay. This is the stretch. This is a freaking Klingon that grows up on blood wine. This is their cultural theme. And yet the Klingon got beat by a human. That Klingon. That well, okay, that Klingon, yes, but it's you know, it, it, it's it's almost superhero type stuff. And he's working at a mining operation. You know, okay. he's, so you know these, he's a these braggart. Aren't, these aren't the warrior Klingons that we know? That's what I'm guessing. All right. I did see that, Elizabeth. Yes. Actually, in the last step of the last season, it gave a vibe when she walked onto the bridge. Yeah. All right. I'm cool with that. I like that. Um. Yeah, oh, it's did. interesting, Elizabeth and I kind of have that one where Laon drank them under the table. Nah, I, look, it's interesting. It's cool. It's just this is Klingon blood wine. This is what they drink, and she drank them under the table. What else can this crew not do? And that leads me to something a little bit later, which someone pointed out in Star Trek Beyond. These characters that we know are almost superheroes in everything that they do. And when they take this substance, Mbenga and Christine, they're on drugs, whether you want to call it meth, whether you want to call it angel dust, whatever, but they're just impossible to beat. I don't know. I And, and they know how to fight. Yes, I know Starfleet officers are taught self-defense, but I just had a tough time with that. 
doesn't mean it's bad. I just didn't like it. Michael, some of your thoughts on that? Um, I, I didn't think anything of it. I just thought, oh, this is probably um, the stuff that makes, uh, you know, the augments, you know, and that's what it was. And it was just a temporary thing, not the permanent stuff that uh, we've, we've seen them use in actually Enterprise. Um, but, you know, that's, that's, that's a whole other issue. Some people don't like that show. So. <laughs> I know, but I said some don't, though, Roger, and you know that. Greg, what are some of your thoughts on that? So... Okay, so I was thinking, because I think we've seen, I don't remember instances, but I think we've seen other cases where, like, okay, one instance is McCoy slips Kirk Triox during a mock time. So he can, quote, breathe easier. But it makes him, you know, it actually, you know, gives him, you know, cardiac arrest or something, or slips him into a coma or something. And there's... I thought there was something in Deep Space Nine with O'Brien or something when he was part of Section 31. There was some drug or something where you could tolerate alcohol or something. I thought there was something, or maybe it was in a book or something I read. But I thought there was like some, you know, 23rd century drug that would make them tolerate alcohol. And the whole thing with um, Chapel and Mbanga, you know, they were in the war. And I'm not getting the impression they were like on a ship i'm getting the impression they were like front lines mash type either official or not official um you know and they had to do whatever they had to do you know there was a lot of dialogue throughout the episode in fact i even wrote down that said this was a beautiful manga uh chapel episode the two of them together a little bit of hints at their backstories and you know she even said to him do you carry this stuff everywhere you go and he's like yeah oh yeah because i mean this guy you know you, you get the impression that the manga does not like to get caught with his pants down and did she say something of are you always packing did she say something like that or is that just the impression i'm getting something like that yeah it was something to that effect yeah but fair enough yes she did say that there was actually quite a bit in this episode between the two. She brings it back and she addresses him by his first name, Joseph. And it is all related to their frontline duty. There is still a lot more to this that we have not seen. Yep. Again, more of the great Star Trek character development that they started with Next Generation and Deep Space Nine and you know, they're, they're doing such a great job. I mean, for me, it is the, okay, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it, it's, Star Trek does it really well. Um, a lot of science fiction wouldn't be successful without the drama. I absolutely loved Expanse. And it was all drama. And so, you know, it's, you know, they, they're balancing it really well. At least in this one, first episode, they're balancing it really well between the drama and the character stories and the adventure. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. And the adventure story. Yeah. No, I hear. I think, no, I think I, I know caffeine just wore guys. Speaking of those drugs, my caffeine just wore up. <laughs> yeah. I'm probably going to have to get a refill a little bit myself. But, um, Michael, I was telling Greg that there was an image that really sold it for me in this episode. I think Greg mentioned early on when they're... Oh, what was your impression of the opening scene, Michael, where you see all of the activity at Starbase One? What was that for you? Uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Greg, would you go over it again real quick? So we, we had this beautiful... <laughs> Tell I rehearsed these thoughts. Um, and we had this beautiful opening shot where we had these like little light craft zipping around, oh, zipping that, around yeah. as they're coming in down around the, the spine of the station. And then you see the pressure domes and other ships. And then they kept pick up on a shuttle. Of the shuttle. <laughs> I just there was thought, a lot of it. How long is that going to take to render on a computer? That's what my thoughts were. Oh, that's I funny was, because I you was do that. just <laughs> yes. looking at that and going, 
I don't even want to think of this. All the trails you had. Oh, it was. Oh, yeah, it was. That's what I was thinking the whole time. So, yes. Greg thought that that was a wonderful opening intro, and he says that it's when they appear, when the Enterprise shows up. I mean, that's his deal. He loves when that happens, and I have to admit, I do too. Uh, in this opening scene, I got a little lost. There was a lot of stuff going on, and I. That was my first impression. I didn't get it the second time around because I guess I'd already seen it. But there was a scene later on when the Enterprise is amongst the dilithium field and when the D7 warps in. And then they pull away, they pull back, and I guess we're going to show an image right now. I guess we're finally going to show an image. I think this is the first time we do it. The D7... Remember, they pull back from that image, and the Enterprise is in the field, and it, it's a two-for-one, where the Enterprise is in the foreground, and the D7 is in the background. I wanted that to be the title shot, but I couldn't get it because of my skill at screen grabs, so we got stuck with this one. <laughs> so, uh, but I wanted that image. I couldn't get it, though, and it really looked good. I was telling Greg that that was a wonderful image, seeing the Enterprise from, I guess, a quarter aft angle and hidden amongst the dilithium rocks, which was good. I don't, that was a good scene. Those, and with the Enterprise... just ice, red ice. Okay, red ice. Because I wouldn't think they would let dilithium just float around like that. No, no. Okay, oh, I apologize. Well, yeah. That's my alarm to get my coming. drugs. Mm -hmm. The what? Your ice is coming, I said. Ice. Ah, ha, ha. Now, the battle where the Enterprise was chasing, I guess it's Sutherland class or Smithfield class. I don't know what it was. But uh, that was kind of cool. It was neat. And I did appreciate that. Uh, the combat was good. I thought the Enterprise was moving a little bit too fast because I commented to Greg when we did the review last week where we also did a discovery review. The final battle in episode 12 of Discovery, of the second season, where the ships, they acted like battleships. They didn't act like fighters. And sometimes the ships move very fast. Sometimes they move very slow, and I don't get it. So I was okay with this, with the Enterprise maneuvering through the ice field. It looked good. And uh, kudos to everyone and the special effects it's there was some good stuff guys i don't know what your thoughts were about the battle even though it was in vain because the klingons figured it out anyway they they needed the, probably the good year to i mean post-production takes most of the time so i mean they did need and i'm glad you know that weight you know is paid off because i mean they really I mean, it's a space show, so they got to do stuff in space sometimes. And they really, you know, having two complex, high priced sequences in the in first episode. episode. Yeah. And, and it's like, yeah. Loved it. Um, you know, it was yeah. gorgeous. I mean, the, you know, uh, I was, I, Michael, I was actually not just thinking about the rendering time, but I was also thinking about the, you know, the animation logic and if they used any of the new, um, like, particle physics stuff that, like, they've introduced in some of the gaming engines, you know, to get the rocks moving. And, you know, <laughs> I just, um, you know, just watching it in, in high death, it's like, you know, technically gorgeous and they were in pursuit so yeah they're gonna move fast and yeah you got ortegas at the helm so they're gonna be moving a little faster than you might want for safety reasons through an asteroid or ice belt ice ring belt or whatever it is and um you know they're on a time time clock so yeah they're gonna be driving those engines you know it's different from having you know you know, armadas in space trying to organize firing angles and all that. Yeah, uh, it was good. 
I did enjoy it. Uh, it was for not the conversation they had with the Klingon at the very end. It was like, hey, you're dealing with the Vulcan, dude. Think about it. So that that was kind of cool. The resolution, eh, might have been a little bit reaching, but folks, we've seen some stranger themes on Star Trek, so I cannot be as discriminating. I mean, there have been some weaker endings to other episodes, and we just let them go. I, I don't think it was a bad ending. It was a gambit. It was honest, and the Klingon bought it. He said, are you willing to have a drink? See me eye to eye? And he did. He went down to the planet. The Klingon said, yep. all right, you, you can tell me all you want over a view screen, pal. Tell me eye to eye. And that was interesting. I did like that part of the conversation. That's, is that an enlightened Klingon? <laughs> that was a really good denouement. Because, I mean, here we're starting to see the type of Klingon commanders we saw in TOS. Yeah, yes. Thinking individuals. Yes. Yes. Not necessarily completely brutish, but thinking individuals. Yes. Yep. Uh, no, there, was I a, did. there was a lot that that final thing about was really good. You know, there was some dialogue between Spock and oh god. Hell yeah. Yeah. You know, I think about how hard it is. I mean, I just watched this twice today. Oh, she's so sweet. Uh, yeah. Watch this twice today, and I'm like, I've watched the original episodes so many times. I know them like the back of my hand. You know, in 50 years, if I, I'm lucky, uh, I might remember these as like the back of my hand. <laughs> um, oh, I, I know, think we will. The the, the 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 scenes, you know, it was like it developed probably a little longer. We realized that oh wow, she's really old. You know, and not only that, I mean, you know, we get to see more of her off-duty personality, which isn't much different from her on-duty personality, but, you know, you know, she's enjoying it, too. Um, what I caught on that was Spock was drunk. He was staggering. Not Did much, but that? he was staggering, yeah. And then, of course, at the very end, they had him being hungover. I'm um, like... Yes. Now, for the reality of drinking, my biggest gratitude to the producers, the director, the editors, we did not see the Klingon hurl on screen. I am so tired of vomit and urine graphically depicted on screen. Nobody needs to see that. <laughs> You're right. I do. I did like that. It's implied, and yep. uh, you can see it, and that's it. That's you don't need stuff. to see it. Yeah. You know, you don't, just like, you know, you don't need to see the bathroom to know it's there. And we do know it's there, so that's a good thing. Oh, that's yes. funny. I just noticed that right now. That's tissue paper. It's fluttering in the breeze because of the fat. <laughs> so... Yeah, I, know. Uh, I, I turned the AC off because mom gets cold, but I just realized how hot it's getting between the light and the laptop. Yeah, I was thinking of removing the jacket right now, but then I might get a comment from the ladies in the chat room, so I didn't want to. They might like that. that so. Well, well I've already been told by the wild, they wanted more than that. So I was like, yeah, oh, okay. wrong person. So it's okay. I, I'm, I'm satisfied with the jacket right here, so it's all good. Although it was funny when I was in Seattle, we went to a game and I went up to a cop and I was asking for directions on how to get to the Metro. And Oh, thank you, Liz. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it didn't take very long. So uh, thank you. See, this is why Greg doesn't have control because you know I'd be going up to find that music, that very specific stripper music right there. Greg, you will, <laughs> you will have control. You're going to be, you're part of this empire, dude. You are. So you'll be able to do your own stuff whenever you'd like. So uh, I've got to, I've got to, I just haven't, dude, we talked about getting together for this for two weeks and I couldn't do it. It's just uh, appointment after appointment after, and then just so many things. People are stunned when they look at just my medical appointments. 
I average one, two, three, four, five a week right now. It's a lot. That's just that. And then the other people have theirs too. So I'm whiny. I don't mean to. Michael, some of your thoughts about the ending of the episode. Um. <laughs> We're all family when I <laughs> we got comfortable. As I said, you know, yes. I, I haven't, you know, I've seen it once, but I was not totally coherent at the time. Um, did you like the episode? I, I did. I, I said before, I liked the episode, but, you know, as I said, details right now, I don't remember most of them. So. And, and, and that's fair. Okay. Um, what do you think, Greg? Uh, what would, uh, if you give it a score, what would you give it? Oh, we're up to score time. Um, or no, no, if there's more, by all means. I, I think there is more. Oh, there's um, lots more. And and I apologize, yes. Going back to when Mbenga and Christine are on the surface, they find Ariana, they find her parents, and they realize things are okay, but they get ambushed by the Klingons right there. And it doesn't take them very long, which I did notice in my in uh in my notes hmm didn't take very much for the medics to figure out what the plan was <laughs> so uh i i thought that was kind of cool it, it it wasn't that difficult so uh the whole thing behind the episode was peace is not wait not profitable right i was trying to think of the ferengi one there is no profit in peace, right? Yeah. Okay. I was Michael. actually half expecting to see a Ferengi. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, I got to run. But oh, good night, Michael. All right, thanks for stopping in, Michael. Okay, see you later. 6 p.m. every Thursday. Well, I said got to change the schedule. I did. Not earlier. I did. We'll see. Okay. Bye bye. Oh, did you hear that? We'll see. Wow. I will look. Uh, it's right there, pal. 6 p.m. Look at it. See it? Watch. There it is. Let me open it up. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. There you go, brother. <laughs> there it is. So it's okay. Don't give me this we'll see stuff. We'll see you later, Michael. Sorry for that. That's All right. Funny. So now, now I got to look this way. Okay. <laughs> I, oh that's right huh i'm looking the wrong way because <laughs> i was like well what's the problem i looked at you that way and i see on screen i'm like, oh, got all red right there uh yeah the fun of live streaming it, it, it's great <laughs> it's great uh there was definitely more uh they built apparently they built their own federation ship oh my god that was so cool Sorry. <laughs> no, not at all. Good. Take over, Greg. No, right there. It was, it was so good. they they it's like they're going into the this dilithium cavern that used to be full of dilithium on right. the mining planet. And it's like they're panning, and all of a sudden you see some wait a minute, that's a saucer. Right. And you didn't see the entire how'd thing. How'd that at get first? here? Huh? Yeah. You didn't what? see the entire thing at first, but they were commenting Not really. About not very well. But yes. you got the hint of the outline. Yes. And um, then they were... Um, well, their oh, conversation... How'd that get here? Oh, I think they yeah. built it. Oh, that was so cool. And instantly you knew that um, we've got... You know, they even mentioned, you know, this whole false flag thing. And it's like... You know, with all the tensions in Asia and Eastern Europe and everything, it's like, you know, it's like, okay, so this is going to be the 2023 Klingon presentation of the Cold War. You know, we're going to have all this, you know, Middle Eastern, North Korea, China, Russia, you know, who's going to, you know, make the next big mistake in in world peace and so i think this is this is really good sorry i am going back over here because i realized i had it <laughs> so we've got you know 
they're building a Federation, or they've got pieces of a Federation starship that they're assembling inside this cavern. And I'm sorry, I've got to jump ahead. Oh, go when, ahead. when Laon is on the communicator, you know, something's about to happen, and the ship breaks through the crust of over the cave and like is taking off i'm like oh my god there is there is cool shot number th three of or two of the yeah. episode and it's like they really pulled all the stops in the season opener yeah because i i think they asked uh, backing up just a bit on that they're having the conversation amongst themselves how'd that get here and i think yeah. it was mbenga that said they must have built it that's yeah. why they've been trying to acquire all this technology. And then when they're aboard the ship, oh, uh, Elizabeth <laughs> shivers yeah. with that. Um, okay. Uh, I I don't think I got shivers myself, but my thing was, oh, damn, what's going to happen? Uh, so my thing was, okay, I, I, I wasn't trying to, like, work it through, but ah uh, here we go you know, I, I guess that was my thing and uh i was trying to think through so i, I didn't get shivers per se because i i think i was always trying to work it through greg otherwise i think i probably would have got that feeling that elizabeth is talking about yeah I, the, the whole time that i was saying that the whole time that Mbenga and chapel were on the ship i'm like well they're gonna do that here like end the you know whatever's going on here and i'm like no they gotta get that ship out of there how are they gonna get that out of there so when they showed that breaking through i'm like oh yeah yeah this okay. is this is this is the you know the space adventure guy moment of the episode right there yeah look there was a war that ship could have been captured it, it there's a lot of stuff it, it it could have been left for dead somewhere that was not recovered by the federation and they just went ahead and repaired it because to build a whole ship from and to have the interior looking like mm, i think that's a bit of a stretch uh sorry i tend to overthink and seeing it break through it was so cool were you really were you overthinking i don't know this is guy moment <laughs> I don't know. Things gotta happening. blow up for us to be entertained, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, nice bit of action doesn't hurt, you know. Not every episode needs action, but the, there, there was a lot going on in this episode. And going back to the conversations that they had aboard the ship, when they all went Marvel DC on the Klingons. I did appreciate that Christine hit one of them and it hurt her, meaning it was starting to wear off. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, so it doesn't last that long. So I was like, okay, all right, I'll, I'll reconsider my angst on that. And I guess it began to be a little bit more real for me at that point. Is the Klingons just kept coming and coming. And when they retreated to that section... I guess they figured the best way out was using the suits. There were no suits. But there were parts of suits in ways that lead me to believe that that ship was captured. It was probably totaled, and they got it there, and they were just trying to fix it, as opposed to an, a, a complete build. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, the, I've the worked in shipbuilding, so that's... Yeah. That's going to take a, a long time to do for, you know, the layman, uh, it, it, for lack, you know, you know, although we don't really know how organized the circle is, and um, the um, so, you know, if they did have chunks of ships that they were able to put together or started it, they would have had to beam it into that cave. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, obviously it was being built. Did you see all the sheet plastic? I did see the stuff on the side, but I didn't notice the sheet plastic per se. Yeah, uh, they, it's possible. 
they basically they took the enterprise set dropped the lights and covered everything like that like it was like in getting worked on <laughs> yeah i, I you know, did see some of the work yes. i look for stuff like that but you know it was it's like you know okay every time they have a damaged ship there's fiber optics hanging from the ceiling every time they're on something that's being you know under construction there's sheet plastic all over everything yeah <laughs> you, know, it's, you, you see and and for me on this seeing the interior look like a federation ship i don't see why the entire ship would need to be that if it's just going to be used to start a war so th that's why it leads me to believe that it was something that was probably recovered but it, yeah it, it's immaterial at this point whether we argue whether it was built or not it just to me it smells like it looks like that it was something that they recovered and they built or put back together wh whether they built it from scratch or whether it was a hulk or pieces yeah i i, I think we're arguing just to argue point is these little SOBs are trying to start war. Yeah. Well, we got to make a little stretch here and there for it to be entertaining. Yeah. And, and, and far be it for me, if I'm belaboring this, I'm belaboring this only because we just are belaboring it. We're moving on. Uh, I, I well, do appreciate counter. your comments, Greg, that it was a Christine and Mbenga episode. Um, yeah. Uh, there, there were two, there were, Actually, no, there's there's three storylines here. And that's Pike. Obviously, he goes off on his own. And then you have La'an and the crew responding. And then the side one is, well, I guess the A plot and the B plot go together. The C plot is Pike. Yeah, but he's gone before yeah, he's the opening gone. credits. So... Um, the B plot is Mbenga and Christine. And uh, there there was good stuff there. Um, uh, it looked I, I like thought they that, thought I they thought were going to the die. They were the highlight, but okay. Oh, okay. So you would think that they're the A plot? Uh, just for screen time okay. and dialogue. Okay. That's cool. Uh, there, there was a lot to like in their conversation. As Greg alluded to earlier which I agree, there is a lot of development on something that's still not clear yet. Because even the Klingon challenged him. Oh, and I wanted that guy decked. And Christine did deck him, where he's threatening him. Oh, well, you're lying and you're lying. Dude, the guy is healing you. Shut up. It's like, there's always that guy, right? It's just, ugh. I guess the Klingons have them too, huh, Greg? Oh, yeah. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, considering their whole culture is based on embellishment and being boisterous. Yeah. Yeah. Toxic Klingonity. Klingonness. Klingonness. That might be the first time that that's mentioned, and I'm all right with that just because of what's going on in the world right now. That's funny. I like it. I'm old. That's yeah, why. <laughs> And and folks, it's it's funny. I, I've said it in the past, and I say it again. I'm old, but I'm not mean. I'm ignorant because of my age, but I'm not hateful. I'm not spiteful, and I think I'm open to a lot of stuff. So just keep that in mind. And I and a lot of the girls here know it because of the other program and and the, the audience itself. I will say stuff, and if you let me know how ignorant I am, hey. This dog can learn some new tricks. <laughs> so. Oh, definitely. Uh, always open to be educated. Hell yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, just where we live versus where you know the other people other people live. You know, yeah. how we grew up versus how other people grew up. That's number one, yeah. yeah. You know, we're the pre cable generation, let alone pre cell phone and pre PC. Yeah, no kidding. I remember that, you know, that on TV, and uh, that was in the late 70s. I didn't know anyone who had cable in the 70s. In the 80s, yeah, I think my brother was the first one to get cable, and then we did later on in the early 80s. 
But I started with the VHS tapes in 1981. My brother purchased an RCA VHS player. Oh, no, it was a VCR. It was a VCR. It was a big old monster, too, and it was awesome. It was all push button. It was the little red lights. It was neat. And I remember going like, to the library and watching Nova's on Beta, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is so cool. <laughs> I knew of Beta, but I was introduced to VHS, and I think in where I lived, it was VHS. I think Beta was in a more upper-class neighborhood, so hence I wouldn't have Beta. <laughs> so I, I just had VHS, and Tiny bit of trivia, folks. What is the first movie that was offered for sale to the general public? Because remember, the video shops had to buy the movies from the studios to rent in all those places. What was the first movie? And bonus trivia, because even I don't remember the price. But what was the first movie that was offered for sale to the general public? You're going to, it's a Star Trek movie, low list. Well, I remember a friend of mine had Star Trek The Motion Picture on Laserdisc, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And then I remember another friend had, the, had finally Star Wars came out on VHS, and we went over to their house and watched Star Wars. The first movie for purchase was The Wrath of Khan. Seriously? By Paramount Home Video. And I remember reading this a long time ago. First Hollywood movie for purchase on VHS. I'm going to do that search on the internet. I wonder what it says. Oh, there's a lot of confusing stuff. I'll have to do a little bit more of a search for that. But Liz is pretty good at finding a lot of stuff. But I do remember reading an article. Yeah, it's it's. It, I messed up on the question because I'm getting a lot of stuff all over the place. But the first one available for purchase to the general public was the Wrath of Khan. And it was on a Paramount fact sheet. So maybe it was just their movie. Maybe it was the first time they offered it. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I, I, I remember. Uh, what was the first movie you saw on VHS? I remember. Oh, on VHS was Star Wars. It was, huh? It was... Empire Strikes Back, I believe, for me. Because it was in 1981. So I think it was The Empire Strikes Back. And then a little bit after that, I remember watching The Wrath of Khan. But that was in 1983, I believe. Because remember, it took a long time for them to get to, for us to see it on TV. Oh, much God, less. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean. It would be almost three years. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, Star Wars, I mean, so, once they, for me, because actually Empire Strikes Back came out in 81. So, I want to say, I didn't see Star Wars on VHS until 83. That was about the time. And, and then, we'll, remember when McDonald's started selling the VHS tapes? Everything they were selling for five dollars or five ninety nine. As long as you bought one burger, you could buy VHS tapes. And oh my God, everyone was buying them because they were. That's how I got my first copies of the Indiana Jones movie. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. Oh, Elizabeth says I think Star Wars was mine. I believe for me, it was The Empire Strikes Back, or maybe I'm getting it wrong, and it could have been. The uh, Return of the Jedi. I might be getting my dates wrong, but I thought it was the Empire Strikes Back, which was impressive. But I remember my brother purchasing in 1981 that stuff. 
crazy, man. It's crazy how stuff has changed over the years. There was a point that I was going to make to you at the very beginning. I'm going to see if I can circle around to it a little bit. And it had to do with the cost of something. I'm going to see if I can recall what it was. But fair enough. Uh, a lot of my first videos collection was used copies from Blockbuster. <laughs> uh, mine were the records. I did a lot of recording. Lots of recording. Yeah, I did. Uh, like I had like all the next generation at one point and and Deep Space Nine. I remember I was recording in 1990. I remember that because I I had the Memorex tapes with the black covers, <laughs> and I went for standard play, and I did one video that had. Yesterday's Enterprise and The Offspring from the third season of The Next Generation. Those were some of my, oh, those were favorite. Those were my favorite. That's how yeah. I introduced non Star Trek fans into Star Trek. It was The Offspring and Yesterday's Enterprise. That was my I end. Mean, that was how we, uh, that was binging before internet. Yep. Yep. Hang on, I got to pause here. Now you got it. Uh, that is cool, Eliz. That did you hear, Eliz? Sorry, Liz. Uh, don't laugh. I just cleaned out a back closet and tossed tons of VHS tapes, like a huge box full. I have the VHS tape, which I have to convert it to digital. Where I think it was June tenth, nineteen ninety, uh, or maybe it was in August. I don't remember, uh, but it, I swear it was the tenth. Something ended with the zero. It was a Friday. Uh, for those of you that are here in Southern California, uh, you had Kevin and Bean from KLOS 106.7, and they were going to be do. They were going to do the tour guides. They were going to do their program from Universe Studios, and my buddy called in and he got two tickets, and he took me the next day, and we were on the the the. The tour universe studios tour with them and it was fun and they had star trek the experience and we got in line and i told joe don't leave don't get your pretzel dumbass because i'm gonna be on this i am gonna get chosen for this and i don't want you to go i want you on there too with a bonehead going to get a pretzel and when they started choosing everyone I just, I was up in front, put my name out, and I remember the kid, he pointed at me, and I was like, yes! So for those of you that remember Star Trek The Experience or Star Trek The Adventure, I played the guy that tries to get through the uh, door, and I was on the bridge of the Enterprise. I was like, wow. And I remember being on the bridge. I'm in this one-piece uniform, lots of Velcro, but I'm wearing the maroon Wrath of Khan uniforms. I'm like, oh my god, I'm losing my stuff. And I'm standing on the upper part of the bridge by the sign station. And I remember looking down, and it was dark. Because remember, it was a it was a filmed thing. The whole program ran about 40 minutes, but they spliced it all together, all the different scenes, and you had like a 10-minute movie, which is really cool. And seeing my name on screen at the very end, I'm like Oh my god, it was up at the very top. It was awesome. So I've got to convert it to digital. But anyway, I am on the bridge in the darkness, and I'm looking down to my right, and stuff looks painted on. I'm like, oh man, this is lame. This is lame. And then the lights went on. I lost my shape. I was on the bridge of the Enterprise. And I just remember looking around, and there's an audience because they're watching, because they're entertaining. It the whole thing is, this is how you make a movie, and they just splice a bunch of the images, and they had us run around and do all the quakey stuff, and it was it was cool. And on the handrail, I have to press a button. <laughs> I don't know if it was colored or not. Go to the elevator to take the miserable and the joke was. Gallant crew of the Enterprise. Oh, your audio cut out, Raj. Oh, all right. How about now?
about now? Uh, it's still quiet for me. Okay. Maybe now? Maybe it's me. Maybe my battery no, died. No, it's okay. Liz, can you hear me? I'll be back. Take over, Greg. I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> so we're talking about bridges. Um, just an aside while he's getting fixed. Um, my f Everybody remembers their first. <laughs> I've got um, a couple fan films behind me. My first bridge was a 360 degree classic set recreation in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And um, oh my God, it was so cool. And since then I've been to the Neutral Zone a couple times, Neutral Zone Studios down in um, Florida. And that was really cool. How about now? Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> um, I met Michael in uh, Florida in December of 2021. Actually, we, we have this theme, that, yes. Michael and I have this thing. <laughs> he came over to Arizona in uh, December of 2020. And thank you, Liz. Appreciate it. Um, where uh, he was coming over to meet family members. And I begged him for an hour. And he gave it to me. And we spent like four or five hours together. It was cool. And we got together with Jeff as well um, at the time. And uh, it was it was cool. It was fun. And now I'm on Michael. That's okay. Where are we going to meet this year? Because in 2021, I flew to Neutral Zone Studios. I flew into Jacksonville, drove north. I had my youngest with me. And we went to that set and spent a, a weekend with Michael. And then this last year, I went to Washington, D.C. And Michael was kind enough to host me for the five days that I was there. Uh, and uh, so I'm on him now. Okay, so where are we going to meet now this year? Where, where, where are we going? <laughs> I tell we got to keep it up, dude. Well, so I don't have else. any sets here, so. Yeah, I know where you are. Well, the closest thing you have is New York, right? Uh, yeah. Um, James Cauley has an amazing set recreation. I have yet to be been. I have yet to go to it. Um, it's licensed by Paramount. Yeah. Um, it's an official tour. And it's in Ticonderoga, New York, and they're open almost all summer. And it's definitely worth it if you can get up there from what I've heard. Um, they now have an engineering set. Um, they've got... Um, Didn't they add or are going to add the next generation? I don't know. The Enterprise D? I don't know. I thought that was being... Somebody was doing that out in California somewhere. I don't know, but I will tell you this, that the only reason why I'm killing myself, the only reason why I'm busting my hiney to build my business on the side is I have one goal and one goal only. Well, I mean, I have a bunch of goals, but I want to build the Voyager sets. And Michael Bednar, as you know, constructed the Neutral Zone, well, not all of it, but most of it, the original set at Neutral yeah. Zone Studios. He built it, oh, along with everyone else. But the original Farragut sets, yeah. Yeah, he built that, and he knows it. As a matter of fact, folks, I was so touched. There it is. You really can't see it because the screen is blocking it out, but that's the Voyager, the model. When I went to visit with Michael and Michael, he gave me the Voyager model because he knows I have an affinity for that ship. And it's because I had a chance to visit the Voyager sets on June 12th, 1998. Joe Minoski, I am forever in your debt. So That's awesome. Um, I was on the Voyager sets, and uh, it, was, uh, it was one of the experiences of my life. And I talked about that in another episode, but I'm not going to go any further. So anyway, I want to build the Voyager sets, and I want to do it out here on the West Coast. And if I can get them done, I would love to try to get it licensed as well. From you want to build them in Maine. You okay, want see this to through. Build them in Why? Maine. Why Maine? Because I'm in Maine. Ah, I see. And it's 
beautiful Maybe we'll year do the round. Enterprise set over in Maine. <laughs> it's beautiful year round, and you know we've got awesome weather. You could film in the winter, and the lighting from the sets would be enough to heat the space. And mm. yeah. I've got five acres. <laughs> that is a lot. I'm looking to purchase some property in near Lake Elsinore, and it's up on the hill a little bit. And I'm hoping to get both vacant lots, but I don't think it would be enough for what I want to do. So I do want to do something uh, within the next, uh, I don't want to put a timeline on it, but folks, the only reason why I'm doing what I'm doing seriously is because I do want to build those sets. And Michael, my wet dream of wet dreams, sorry, it's a Star Trek wet dream, so take it for whatever it is. I want to, I want to hire Michael Bednar to build the Voyager sets just as they were. And I know it's going to cost it's, it's, you're looking at house, house prices, you know, oh, especially if them. you want to do practical screens and all that. Oh God. Yes. This is an excess of, yeah, it, it's easily going to be over a hundred thousand dollars. I do not have that money today. And I won't have it tomorrow either. I'm not bragging, folks. I'm not. I'm saying this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because I want to build those sets. And I would love to have the Voyager. And all kidding aside, the Enterprise. And who knows? Who knows? It'd be kind of neat. And it would yeah, be I in Southern Voyager's California. I engineering set. I was able to... Oh, my God. When I... The bridge was dark, but it was lit enough where you could see the writing and stuff. We were in the ready room. We were in the conference room. Of course, the bridge. Medical was lit up. Oh, my God. It was beautiful. But I, oh, it was the first day of filming for the episode Drone. Where oh. that boar guy comes in from the 29th century. That drone. Oh. Yes. So they were in astrometrics filming. So we couldn't get to Astrometrics. There was another spot we could get into, but we went into the mess hall, which was really neat. And we fell back because we walked in. Um, and there was a, a guy resting there, and we felt so bad. We're like, oh, sorry, sir. Oh, no, no, no. No, you guys, the, you guys are the ones on the tour, right? It's, uh, uh, it's just, everyone is cleared. We're notified if they're guests. And you guys are today's guests. So, no, you're good, man. Don't worry about it. So he started talking to us about the themes in the mess hall, which was so cool. He was on a break, dude. And he just started talking to us. He was really nice, as most people were that day. But That used uh, to be the – that was the redress of 10 Forward, wasn't it? Yes. And the windows were reversed. Yes. The, uh, yes. Yeah. Obviously reversed. Yeah. Obviously reversed. And – Medical was lit up. We sat in the doctor's chair, which was really cool. And we had a run of the sets for an hour. Wow. I think it was Kenneth Billers or Keith. I forget. Who was the assistant? His assistant. They didn't allow them on set either. So it was all three of us that we had a chance. We roamed the Voyager sets on our own for an hour. And it was amazing. I didn't. We went into hydroponics, so I stood in in uh, what's her face's alcove, and engineering was lit up. It was amazing. It was what amazed me the most was walking down the middle, and I could basically reach with my hand to the stations that were on the sides, and I was like, it looks so much bigger, and. That guy who was in the mess hall said, camera lens is this big, pal. <laughs> yeah, it looks bigger. Janeway's ready room was awesome, but it was so small. Dude, my office is bigger than Janeway's ready room, <laughs> which was surprising to me. Still awesome. I, 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 I would take that as my office in a heartbeat. But we went into engineering. Maybe we couldn't go up to the very top because they said that they were, they had to have like permission to be up there because it wasn't, 
very well built. You, you know what I mean? When they filmed, they had to put like supports if someone was up there. So they were like, well, you can't be up there. And I was like, oh man, damn it. I wanted to be up there, but that's okay. Engineering, medical, hydroponics. Of course, the bridge, conference room, as I mentioned, the ready room, several of the hallways. Didn't see transporter room, didn't see astrometrics. And the hangar bay. But we did see the Delta Flyer under construction. Oh, wow. Because in the hardware section where they were building stuff, they told us, oh, and this is going to debut later in the season. So we did see the Delta Flyer. We, we, we thought it looked like a shuttlecraft, but it was the bare bones. It was the wooden structure. But they neat. were building the Delta Flyer. That was neat. So uh, it was cool. It was cool. We were there on June twelfth, nineteen ninety eight. So you can do the timeline. You can figure out exactly when it was. It Very was. cool. Yeah. Sorry, folks. I got lost on that one, but uh, it was it was awesome. And yeah, it's just it, it was amazing. But when I went into Tuvox Elco. There was a wooden crate in there. You know, the kind that they used to have for milk cartons? And I just thought that was so funny. A wooden crate on a 23rd century starship. He had it on there so he could put his leg, you know, prop up his leg when he was in there or or whatever. But I just thought that was so interesting. In that alcove, there was a wooden crate. I was like, that's funny. But it was, it was exciting. And I'm sorry, I tell the story over and over and I shouldn't. But anyway. It's cool. I, I was like, we're all so, jealous. Eh. You know what, though? Once you peek behind the curtain, the magic is gone. It is the ultimate holy grail for the fans. But I wrote a story after it, and I have it somewhere. And it's in my email. Somewhere I saved it. And it's a wonderful story that I wrote. It's like a four or five-page story about my adventure that day. And, oh, was it laced with Star Trek minutia and stuff. But I did notice that I lost the desire to watch Star Trek after that. I peeked behind the curtain. Wow. It was it was crazy. So um I don't know. I, I don't know if I have do you have pictures from your trip to Neutral Zone Studios? Do or do I? Yeah. Um I can get them for another week. Um yeah. Um, my laptop's not well them. organized, and um I had another laptop then that bricked. And I don't know, um, there might be some in my Facebook that are, I'm sure they're public if they're on my Facebook. I know um, I did a few, but I had two phones at the time. So I, uh, I think I put most of them on the other phone that I have. So, so I'm going to go current, through my... My current profile pictures from, I think it's Work 9 down in Arkansas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, where we did the Constar stuff. Right now, my profile pic is, sadly, I'm into the second week of uh, of a cat that we adopted late last year, somewhere around September, October. Mm. He, um, he was this big. His name was Orion. That woman that lives here, you know, you know how I address her. And, uh, she and my daughter saved its life. His name was Orion. And two weeks ago, she left him out late at night and forgot, left him outside. And uh, I found a cat in the morning while well, what was left of the cat. Ooh. And uh, I thought it was another cat. I didn't think it was him until I found out later. And I'm sorry. I'm 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 still crushed. That's sad. He was a good boy, and he helped her heal 
was helping her heal. And uh, yeah. Oh, I think I found them. Uh, not too many on my iPhone account. The rest of them are on. Uh, they have a fun yeah. picture of me and Vance Major it, it, sitting in the brig at neutral zone that I was looking, trying to hunt for quick. Oh, Vance Major. Yeah. I think I know who he is. Um, this is the outside of the studio. Yep. And I don't know if I can advance it. I'm not used to using the I. I thought I could just like hit enter and go to the next one. There's the next one and then the next one. And then there it is. There's part of the set. Yeah. And it's enclosed, which is really cool. It, it is really neat. Really neat. Yeah, there it is. See? And then we're going to do some show that night, some award ceremony. It looks cool. It is really good. That's the Jeffrey's tube. Let's see. Yeah, that's looking up the Jeffrey's tube as well. Some of the colors is just really exciting. And it's designed in the same way that they had it uh, back then at Paramount Pictures. Yeah, um, some of the dials did work, but it wasn't on at the time. But it was cool. Okay, sorry. That's the hotel room. It's actually a damn nice hotel room, I got to admit, in Kingsland. But, yeah, that was it, folks. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Um, well, my youngest, she seems to be okay. Um, she's unfortunately desensitized because we have lost a lot of cats uh, due to coyotes and just things that happen. We've lost a lot of them in the 10 years that we've been here. But this one... This one was our cat. Yeah, you know what? I'm sorry. I I'm I'm I miss him. I really do. And I'm I'm not over it. And I'm just gonna I'm not gonna be a fun person right now. This is the stuff that gets me choked up. <laughs> he, he, he was a good boy. And he helped my significant other recover. Was when I was in Washington, D.C. on December 4th, that Sunday, I got word that she wasn't going to make it. So, and uh, the images that I posted on my Facebook page are of him when I took him to go and visit her. And she helped him just like she, just like she found him. He fit in the palm of her hand. He was all bones. He had just barely opened his eyes. And uh, he was a good boy. I just don't understand how she forgot and left him out at night. I just don't understand. But, you know, it's all right. Sorry. I miss him. I really do. I miss every single pet we've ever had. And it's interesting because she was recovering from almost dying, basically. And this little animal was with her and helping her. And he would spend time with my youngest because my oldest had no time for her. And he would come over and see me, too. And I still have his box that he would kind of hide in. And I've kept the box. I'm not getting rid of that box. We have collars. Yeah, sorry, folks. He was a good boy. And uh, my daughter and and her use a line. Well, he's grateful. Cats don't understand what grateful is. 
All he knows is that when he opened his eyes, both of you were there and you fed him and made him stronger and took care of him. It's, yeah, he, he, he loves them. And he... I'm glad I didn't know it was. There was nothing left. The bones, the, it was almost like a wire frame, folks. And I was just like, oh, I wonder which one they got. I didn't know it was him. That's it. We had two cats that were fam The last other one is Cobalt. When I was ill in 2012 and 2013, I had this old, old man. Big old, big old cat. He's also on my Facebook page. My daughter named him Cobalt. He was a beautiful soul. I had him for a year. That was the first cat that I ever really got attached to. So he was a good man. He got me through when I was injured and recovering. I got hurt at work and I was off for about a year. And I love that cat. And when the cat went to die, because animals go off to die. When, you know, they go and hide, they find a place and they fall asleep. And the saddest thing I ever had was, I wish I would have been there. You know, I owed him that, you know, so. Uh, sorry, folks. But you remember all your animals too, right? Oh, yeah. My parents uh, bred English setters at one point, so. Really? Yeah. Um, I don't remember all the puppies, but I remember the, a lot of the adult dogs we've had over the years. Um, yeah. The biggest one I miss is a horse we had named Junior. Junior, huh? Yep. His actual pedigree name is Destiny's Encore, but <laughs> we all called him Junior. So apparently somewhere in his pedigree there was a destiny. So he was wow. bay with a black mane and tail, a Tennessee walker. Yep. And let's see, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven cats now? Over the years, at, the, at my adult family, and uh, we've we've had two dogs. Um, we're down to one, and we've had her about eleven years. So it's getting there. Growing up, I didn't have my own pet per se, but everyone in my family had a cat or a dog, and I guess I was a beneficiary of them being the youngest. I, I never really had one. Uh, someone found out that I didn't have one. They gave me this beautiful dog. He was, I think, part German Shepherd, part Retrieve, part maybe even Doberman. He was an interesting mix, but he was this beautiful boy. And my grandmother didn't like pets, being from the old country, Mexico. You hear these rumors in the town that this old lady and this dog, it's like, so she hated German Shepherds. He was part oh. German Shepherd, so... You know, the things you hear over these small towns. So she would refer to him in Spanish as monster and ah, get him out of here. And, and yet she would secretly feed him. Here. But anyway, so it, and this one, she referred to him as monster in Spanish. And it's the monstro Neron. Vente de aquí. Neron. Nero. I looked at him. I said, young man, you have your name. Your name is Nero. <laughs> I named him Nero and I kept it. And uh, took him home with me. And I was at my grandma's when I had him. And then we went back uh, home. And, uh, yeah, he, he populated the neighborhood before I could get him fixed. That boy, <laughs> voracious, man. And I saw, look, I knew his kids for, like, years. Yeah. And then he disappeared one day. So Ooh. we went searching for him. And we never got the report from Animal Control that, 
Don't know if he got picked up. Don't know if he got hit. Don't know anything, but because he was tagged, and he we you know we got him fixed, and uh, just don't know what happened. I didn't have a pet for the longest time until 2012, when this old man wanders into our front yard. Old cat. He was an old man. He was a good kid, though. Oh, very cool. A spotted skunk. Wow. They're cute. And they're not dangerous, Elizabeth. They don't do what they do because, you know, like scorpions. Scorpions do what they do because they're scorpions. Skunks don't just all over the place. I believe you can get them descented. Oh, or fixed. Yeah, I guess you can. That's Double funny. fixed. Double yeah, fixed. Yeah, that one. Um, I think you can also like do it with feather ferrets and stuff too, because they they don't spray like a skunk does, but they can be pretty stanky. Really, ferrets? Yeah. Oh, didn't know. I know oh, a little bit yeah. of wolverines. Red Dawn, baby, nineteen eighty four. Oh. <laughs> Well, yeah, we, uh, the weirdest pet we had was rats. We didn't have rats or mice or whatever, but we were in commerce when I grew up. We had a major rail line right behind our house. It was an international line. So whatever came from the port always went behind us. So we would see these massive rats. But they wouldn't come onto our property because we had cats. And we had dogs, too, uh, so they wouldn't. But every now and then, I would see something torn up in the backyard and looked like a huge rat to me. And I was like, ooh, either the cats got it or our dogs got it. And, yeah, likely. Uh, yeah. But we were lucky. Like, when we moved in here, where we are here in Pomona, uh, <laughs> we moved in, and we didn't bring – we left three cats behind and because we, we couldn't have any. And we didn't know what we could do. But about a month after we settled here, we went back in an operation, a <clears throat> stealing the enterprise operation. <laughs> My daughter and I went in the middle of the night to go and get them. And we only brought one back. And then the next weekend, we got the other two. So these kids showed up and they were A1 predators. They cleaned up the neighborhood. All the houses around here had rats. All of a sudden, they were gone. Wow. So as much as my neighbors disliked my me, they disliked me for some reason, uh, they uh, they loved my animals. They would feed them. They, all the neighbors would feed my cats, dude. It was crazy because they appreciated that all the cats in the neighborhood were lame country bumpkin cats. My cats showed up, and they were hood cats. So they were A1 predators. But That's yes, funny. folks, we are all over the place on this. And I do apologize. We've been going on for a while. I know Greg has to get to work tomorrow, or I'm assuming he does. Oh, yeah. But I don't know if you had any final thoughts on it, Greg. We did go over quite a bit on this episode. I'm really happy. Oh, it was, it was a great episode to talk about. Um, what would be your score on it if you have anything? I'm going to give this one an A. Liz, what are you going to give it? Greg gives it an A. Oh, did she give it something? Oh, uh, oh, not yet. Oh, there it is. Oh, A minus. Okay, then I'm gonna be the jerk. Uh, I'm gonna give it a B plus. But I think it was really well done. And when you average out our scores, it's an A minus. Yeah. So overall, this was a good episode. This was a good start. Folks, if their writing continues like this, I can nitpick from here to forever. That's not the point. It was a good story. There was a lot going on. Greg, you said earlier, there's a lot of backstory that is being developed, which we still don't know everything, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. They're doing backstory without us knowing 
all of it, and it's really good. I, I, it's confusing what I just said, but I think I, I think you guys know what I mean. They're talking about stuff that we don't know about yet. Well, it's the best way to do it, so they're not going on and saying, you know, you know, you, you don't have like this, you know, dramatic aside, you know, giving you the history and everything. It's like, oh, so you still carry that everywhere you go, huh? You know, it, it's like, oh, so this guy's always had this, you know, super adrenaline stuff with them, you know, um, you know, it's inferred, you know, uh, you know, he's telling, you know, you know, you get this interaction with a Klingon that he's never met. And it's like, you know, oh yeah, you were in the war. Sure you were. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so you get to, oh, so you get to have that, you know, you get to hear it new without it being forced. So, so often, you, you know, and the writers have to be clever with that, you know. It's like explaining something for the layman or commanding officer. You know, it's also explaining it for the off audience. Um, you know, you know, and original Trek Rodberry didn't want to go into long drag dragged out things. It's like we're putting it. This is a communicator. People will know it's a communicator because they're talking into it. <laughs> you know, you don't have to, you know, go into every little minute, min, you know, detail about it. People figure it out in context, and I think they're doing that with these backstories and how long Manga and Chapel have had a working relationship. I appreciate that, Greg. That's interesting. My tiny <coughs> take to that is when you went to go see the movies in the '90s, Star Trek spoke its own language. They did not describe what shields or phasers or what. It was understood that if you're going to see the movie, you understood some of the language already. And that was unique because they would not introduce characters like they do in movies. And it was part of the club. And what they're doing here is, dare I say, part of the club work. It's not bad. I'm in. But they're doing it in a way that they're, you know, you don't have to know Major Barrett's Christine Chapel <coughs> to learn this Christine Chapel. In fact, it probably would help if you didn't. Um, yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. We barely got to know Mbanga from one episode he was in. So he is an open slate. He's familiar, but the sky's the limit with him, other than that he was an expert in Vulcan medicine. Uh, Pike, you know, has been slowly getting defined, redefined. Um, but this is also supposed to be like 13, 10 to 13 years later. I think we talked about that last week. Um, so what we don't know, Ortegas, um, oh God, the, uh, the other officer at the helm. Um, I know. I don't know her name either. I, was I don't even know if that Mitchell. Mitchell. Um, I think they mentioned it once, and actually I looked it up earlier today because I'm like, I, she's rarely been featured, and she actually got some really good screen time tonight. She's the um, Asian lady, right? Yeah. Her name is Mitchell. Okay. What the hell's with Mitchell's on the right side on this ship? <laughs> yeah, Gary Mitchell was his name. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> Uh, I think one of our fan films has a Mitchell too. Oh, actually, yeah. no. There's one of the one of the other actors. A little shout out to him if you ever watches this. Greg Mitchell. He's another Greg. Um, we so yeah, um, yeah. Um, no, I think they're doing it great, and I th think we'll get to learn more about Lon. Um, I saw that she's got a folk a episode focusing on her coming up. And Melissa Navia has promised that they, they're doing more with her this season, too. All right. I'm she's apparently a to... fan favorite. Yeah. She does have a big fan base, and she's I think she's loving it. So, Do you have a favorite character so far? Maybe not. Think about that. And Liz, not that I'm asking for homework or anything, but think about that. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about favorite characters throughout the the entire universe and maybe strange new worlds because i don't have one yet but do you know who my favorite character in discovery is 
it's the engineer the one that came on in the second season she, the comedian in real life i forget her name she always calls what's his face yo bobcat <laughs> you know she is awesome man. i love her forgive me yeah, I know I jet reno jet reno oh far and away favorite character and yep. i i i cannot get enough of her she's damn funny man uh, i like grudge okay okay um actually no um tilly book the cat you know um Sa- uh, saru yeah. um you know sorry to Sonequa. she's not my favorite i know you're the star oh, yeah she's not my favorite. um but yeah i i think they've got some you know i mean i even like Giorgio. <laughs> my wife hates oh her. yeah um, I, yeah, I have a friend that dislikes her because he says in this age, why does she still have an accent? I'm like, well, I, uh, Michelle Yo, with an accent or not, she's awesome. <laughs> it may not be appropriate. I get. Oh, Reno, is that yours also? All right. So from Discovery, I wonder if if that's yours. So, just for what it's worth. Who is your favorite character in the rest of the series? So I'm going to be asking that next week. So we have gone way over at this point. Uh, Folks, I did enjoy the episode. I just nitpicked some of the things, and it brought it down for me. But would I watch the episode again? Hell yeah. I'm going to watch it again, and I'm going to be watching next week. So I'm looking forward to it. Catch us at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Hopefully we won't go as long next time. I'm sorry for the cat, but it is what it is. We're sorry for the cat. Yeah. That was tragic. Yeah, so sorry I brought it back up, but it is messing with me, and I I can't. I I have been bummed. There's no doubt about it. So I apologize. Tig no time. She's awesome. I've seen her stand up. She's funny, but I like her as Jet Reno. She is as actress, awesome. As an actress, as a comedic actress in a role, she is great. Oh my goodness, yes. And I would go see her on stage. But I just saw one of her specials. And I was like, eh, eh. It was okay. I'm not but, a big stand-up fan either. So, I mean, that's, yeah. that's stuff. Yeah. No, she's... <laughs> so, yeah. As a comedic <laughs> actress, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. It's it, the exact... Liz, we actually have something that we differ on? There, uh, Liz had commented to me a while back. She was... She, she told me in a message. She was, Raj... I see you as a kindred spirit because we have so much in common. And I, Liz, I appreciate you a great deal too. You are awesome. And we do have a lot in common, which is neat. We got to get Liz on this side of the screen one night, Roger. She wants to. And I just know it's circumstances, but she does want to be on with us. And Liz, uh, we do. We definitely want you on. So, uh, folks, you know, you want to join? Just let us know. But Liz, you have to. Pharaoh has said it, and he hopes he'll do it. <laughs> you guys are blowing up the ch- you're blowing up the chat tonight. So uh, definitely, she does the time she does, and I, I appreciate. It. And I appreciate that, Liz. I have actually had quite a few people reach out. Well, not quite a few. I've had a few souls reach out, and. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. She does. She does want to be on with us, and I know it's going to happen. So we'll see. Uh, we're on every, We still have nine more episodes, folks. So Greg's like, oh, shit, so that's right. It's a 10 episode run. <laughs> no, again, I asked one person, and it, I only asked one person. I said, Greg, would you like it? And he was like, yes. And we joked about that last week. What seemed like an eternity for me was a time zone difference. Oh, between the time zone difference and just the timing of seeing the message, it's like, I mean, I think, like we talked about it, it's like, it was, I answered the minute I saw it, but you were like, 
Is he going to respond? Is he going to respond? <laughs> Which was really funny because I, I kid you not, we had talked about it years ago about doing something, and then just life happens. And when Strange New Worlds, I said, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I reached out and I told everyone, look, folks, you're invited in. But no one answered me. So I was like, okay, I'm going to ask Greg. And Greg was like, yeah. So it was a funny story. I liked the way we told it last week, too. It was good. So, folks, that's it. We're just going to belabor this. Greg, you are absolutely awesome. I look forward to you are too, sir. hearing the rest of the insight. A lot of fun. I appreciate the uh, the uniform, too. I went Kirk. Oh, yeah. this side. <laughs> yeah, which is cool. And uh, I have my command one, but that's inside. Every desk has a badge here. There's a uniform. <laughs> There's a dress code in our office. So everyone has a badge, but mine's are inside. So, folks, I guess, look, we'll see you on the other side. Peace always. I thank you for spending time. I know quite a few other people are watching as well. Uh, let us know who you are and where you, where you hail from. This is fun. Love to hear your insight, your comments, see where we're going. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to it. But for now, Strange New Worlds is the only thing that I have on calendar after July because I'm playing it by ear. So I'm looking forward to that. I got I to gotta do something. So when I find out more news, I will overshare as always. There's always Greg? time for Star Trek. Hell yeah, that's why I'm going to make sure to do this. <laughs> Greg, would you Sir. care to take us away, young man? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again so much for joining us this evening. We'll see you next week, 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Live long and prosper.